Force and motion are popular areas of study in science classes at any grade level. To teach these areas successfully, rockets are used as a great source for force and motion concepts, principles, and scientific inquiry. The Pitsko straw rocket is a simple yet effective way to apply these areas in the classroom by designing, building, and launching a straw rocket. At this time, gather the following materials. Before we begin designing the rocket, we will identify the parts of the rocket we will be building. On a straw rocket, the body tube of the rocket will be the straw. If you are not using the Pitsco Precision Straws, you will want to make sure the straws you are using fit on the launcher fairly snug. If the straw is too loose, the air will leak out of the sides of the straw. We will include a nose cone on our rocket, which will be formed from clay. The nose cone will indicate the top of the rocket. The fins are the final part of the rocket. We will make our fins from a 3x5 index card, and they will be located at the bottom of the rocket. We're now ready to begin designing a straw rocket. To design your rocket, you will want to determine how long you want the body tube to be, what fin shape you will use, how many fins your rocket will have, and how you want to shape the nose cone. We will start with the body tube. A precision straw is eight inches long. You can measure and cut your straw to the length you desire for your rocket. We recommend at least a length of four inches with a maximum length of eight inches. For our rocket, we will keep it eight inches long and will not require any cutting. Now we will work on the fins of the rocket. We have a lot of different options when it comes to fin shapes. You can research different rockets and see the variety of shapes they have. We have identified some shapes here. There are also some suggestions in the Pitsko Straw Rocket Class Pack instructions. To make the rocket balanced, it is necessary to make the fins all the same size. For our rocket, we will use a basic right triangle fin shape. Locate the index card. An easy way to make this particular fin shape is to take the index card and fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Take the corner of the folded index card that is made of four free flaps of paper. Cut this corner off. For our rocket, we will use all four fins that we created, but you can use either two, three, four, or five fins. We will attach the fins using tape. Tear off the tape to a length no longer than the edge of the fin that is to be connected to the rocket body. Place the tape on the edge of one fin and tape it to the body tube. Repeat this for all fins. It is important to attach the fins so that they are evenly spaced around the rocket body for stability and that the extra tape does not cover the end of the straw to prevent a successful rocket launch. Carefully trim off any excess tape. Next, we will work on the nose cone. Like the fin shape, there are a lot of different options for a nose cone shape. We have created some options here. It is important to make the nose cone in a shape that is aerodynamic and that will have the least resistance soaring through the air. You will also want to note that using too much clay will make your rocket too heavy to fly. For our rocket, we will use this design. Pinch a small amount of clay and knead it to soften it. Carefully shape the clay to match your nose cone design. Smooth the clay 
preventing any resistance of the rocket in flight. Press the nose cone on top of the rocket body. About a quarter of an inch of the clay should go inside the end of the straw. Make sure that the end of the straw is sealed with clay for a successful launch. Congratulations! You have successfully built your own straw rocket that is ready for flight. Now we will test the rocket and learn how to use the Pitsco straw rocket launcher. Locate the Pitsco straw rocket launcher and the straw rocket you just built. Let's begin by identifying the components of the launcher. The launch tube is the brass tube out in front that the rocket will slide over. The launch tube can easily be adjusted to different trajectory angles marked by moving the launch tube side to side. On the launch tube is a small O-ring that can be used as a stopper for the straw rocket. The launch tube is connected to the bottom of a plastic launch cylinder that houses the launch rod or plunger. The launch rod is weighted and is marked on the side of the rod. These rod marks are used as a point of reference when raising the rod to different heights. By varying the rod height, you can control the distance and height of the rocket's flight. Before we launch the rocket, make sure there are no people that could accidentally get hit with the straw rocket. Goggles should be worn during launches. It is important to not aim the rocket at people. We also need to point out that if the launcher is used on the floor, you do not want to lean over the launch tube when raising and dropping the launch rod. Being safe is critical, and we don't want anyone to get hurt. To test your rocket, we will need to first slip the straw rocket over the launch tube. Adjust the launch tube and rocket to the desired trajectory angle. Raise the launch rod to the desired height. Release the rod so that it falls to the bottom of the cylinder. And watch your rocket fly. The action of releasing the rod from an elevated height compresses the volume of air in the cylinder and forces the air into the launch tube. Since the straw rocket covers the end of the launch tube, this air forces the rocket off the tube. The rocket soars into the air and then descends due to gravity. We will learn more about this process in the Make the Connection chapter of this DVD. Straw rockets can travel up to 50 feet, depending on the rocket. If your rocket didn't launch or fly successfully, here are some troubleshooting solutions. Check to make sure the straw isn't too loose on the launch tube. Make sure the nose cone completely covers the end of the straw. The nose cone could possibly be too heavy. You may try lifting the launch rod to a higher rod mark or remove some of the clay from the nose cone to reduce the weight of the rocket. If the rocket wobbles, check to make sure the fins are evenly spaced that the nose cone is smooth and isn't too heavy, and that the rocket length is long enough or isn't too long. We have successfully built and launched your straw rocket. Next, I recommend checking out the activity chapter of this DVD. In that section, we will show you a couple of activities to test your straw rocket by doing additional launches and experiments. In this activity, we will vary the angle of trajectory on the straw rocket launcher to see how the difference in angles affects the rocket's range. At this time, gather the following materials.
For a successful launch, here are some recommendations before we begin. This activity may be easier if students work in teams of two. One student can perform the launch, and the second student can run the stopwatch. It's a good idea to practice using the stopwatch with launches prior to starting the activity and collecting data. You will want to do this activity in an area that is free from any obstructions. A gym with high ceilings would be an ideal location. If you have to launch outside, make sure that it is not a windy day because the wind will affect your data. To get started, Locate the Varying Launch Angles data sheet from the Straw Rockets Teacher's Guide. Be sure to look over the data sheet so that you collect all the data you will need to collect from each launch. Slip your built rocket over the launch tube ensuring that the rocket slides down on the tube and stops at the O-ring stopper. It is important to not move the O-ring from the initial position throughout the activity. It is also necessary to use the same built rocket for the entire activity. Adjust the launch tube and rocket to the trajectory angle of 15 degrees. Raise the launch rod to the launch rod mark that reads 20. The mark will be directly under the 20 on the rod. At this point, get the stopwatch ready. As soon as the rocket launches off the launch tube, start the stopwatch and stop the timing as soon as the rocket hits the ground. Now, release the launch rod so that it falls to the bottom of the cylinder. Measure the rocket's range using the measuring tape. The range is the distance that the rocket traveled through the air from the launcher to the ground. The rocket may bounce after it hits the ground. We will want to measure from where the rocket made initial contact with the ground back to the end of the launch tube. An easy way to tell where the rocket made contact is to use a roll of range paper. Because the clay nose is heavier than the rest of the rocket, it will touch down first. The clay leaves a mark when it touches the paper. Record the rocket's range and flight time on the data sheet. Launch the rocket one more time from the 15 degree angle and the 20 launch rod mark and record the second launch's information on the data sheet. Repeat this process using trajectory angles of 30, 45, 60, 75, and 90 degrees at a launch rod mark of 20 and complete the data sheet. Finally, analyze the data generated from your launches and explain how the difference in launch angles affects the rocket's range. Congratulations! you have successfully completed this activity. We will now demonstrate another activity. For the next activity, we will vary the launch rod marks on the straw rocket launcher to see how the difference in the height of the launch rod when released affects the rocket's range. At this time, gather the following materials. You will have most of the items from the previous activity. The data you will need to collect for this activity will be the launch rod mark 
and the distance the rocket traveled, or range, for each launch. You can record this data on a piece of notebook paper. Slip your built rocket over the launch tube, ensuring that the rocket slides down on the tube and stops at the O-ring stopper. As with the previous activity, it is important to not move the O-ring from the initial position throughout the activity. It is also necessary to use the same built rocket for the entire activity. Adjust the launch tube and rocket to the trajectory angle of 45 degrees. You will keep the launch tube at this angle for the entire activity. Raise the launch rod to the launch rod height that reads 10. The mark will be directly under the 10 on the rod. Release the launch rod and using the measuring tape, measure the distance from the end of the launch tube to where the rocket made initial contact with the ground. Note the launch rod mark and the distance the rocket traveled on your notebook paper. You will then lift the launch rod to a height of 12 and release the launch rod. Measure the distance of this launch and record the results on your notebook paper. Repeat this process for launch rod heights 14 through 20 in increments of two. After all the launches are complete, you can graph your results on a piece of graph paper. The x-axis corresponds to the launch rod height and the y-axis corresponds to the range or distance traveled. Once you have finished your graph, you can now predict the result of future rocket launches. You can also analyze the relationship between the rod height and distance traveled. Congratulations, you have successfully completed this activity. Straw rockets can provide a number of lessons and activities that teach both science and math concepts. By collecting the mass, length, and diameter of the straw rocket, and also the angle, launch rod height, range, and altitude, which is the highest point the rocket reaches during flight, you can identify different variables and constants. Individual data or class data can be compared and graphed to show results or to make predictions. For additional activities, consider the Straw Rocket Teacher's Guide available on our website at shop.pitsco.com. While on the website, check out our activity section to find even more great hands-on activities. If your straw rocket launcher has been stored without being used for several months, or if the spring apparatus or piston's movement becomes erratic, the O-ring inside the launch cylinder may need to be re-lubricated. To re-lubricate the O-ring, gently separate the launch cylinder from the base by pulling them apart so that the spring apparatus, including the piston, is exposed. Next, rub a small amount of silicone lubricant around the O-ring. A tube of lubricant should have been included with your launcher when you purchased the launcher. When done, replace the launch cylinder in the base of the launcher.
If you need to order more silicone lubricant or if your launch tube needs replaced, please contact our customer service at 1-800-835-0686 or visit our website at shop.pitsco.com. In this video, we built a straw rocket, launched it, and demonstrated it in a couple activities. Now we want to help you make the connection to how Newton's laws of motion can be explained and applied with the straw rocket. Sir Isaac Newton published three laws of motion in 1687. The laws are used to explain the relationship between forces applied to an object and the motion created because of those forces. Let's start at the beginning with Newton's first law. It states that an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. It also states that an object in motion will stay in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. The first law is referred to as the law of inertia. Inertia is the resistance of an object to change from motion or rest. Once an object starts in motion, it will require an equal or greater force to stop it from moving. Let's apply this first law to the straw rocket. The straw rocket is at rest on the launch tube and stays at rest until the launch rod is dropped. When released, it provides the unbalanced force necessary to put the rocket into motion, sending it into the air. This rocket in motion will stay in motion until acted upon by unbalanced forces like gravity and friction. As soon as the rocket is launched, gravity is pulling down on the rocket and the rocket begins to slow down. Friction between the rocket and molecules in the air acts as another unbalanced force that also slows down the rocket. At some point, gravity and friction will bring the rocket back down to the ground and it will be at rest once again. Newton's second law states that force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration is produced when a force acts on an object of a certain mass. The greater the mass of the object being accelerated, the greater the amount of force needed to accelerate the object. For the second law, we can find the force applied by the launch rod by first finding the mass in kilograms of the launch rod. You can find the mass of the rod by attaching a spring scale to the rod. If your spring scale measures in grams, then you need to divide the grams by 1,000 to convert it to kilograms. That mass of the rod is then multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. According to Newton's second law, multiplying the mass times acceleration will give you the force. Newton's third law simply states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Applying the third law to the straw rocket, the action is the launch rod being dropped from an elevated height. The opposite reaction is the straw rocket moving off the launch tube. To make sure the straw rocket will lift off the launch tube, the action or thrust from the rod being dropped must be greater than the mass of the rocket. If you have a large amount of clay on the nose cone and the rod isn't raised high enough, then the straw rocket may not lift off the launch tube. In summary, the straw rocket is at rest on the launcher and requires an external force to push the straw rocket into motion. The amount of force exerted by the rod being dropped is determined by multiplying the mass of the rod times the acceleration due to gravity. The action of the rod being dropped produces the equal and opposite reaction of the straw rocket being launched into the air. Newton's laws provide the scientific basis for understanding how rockets work. 
Our straw rocket is a simple yet effective way to demonstrate these principles. We hope that you continue to make the connection between the hands-on lessons you learn in school and the real-world applications we are surrounded by in life. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics can be found in places all around us. All you have to do is look. Let's see what we can find for the straw rocket. In science, we can find several connections. For technology, the following principles are found. Engineering covers these principles. Last but not least, math connections are the following. Ready, set, launch into straw rockets with the Pitsco Straw Rocket Launcher. The perfect mission to get your students excited about rockets in your classroom. Straw rockets are easy to build by simply using a straw as the rocket body, clay as the nose cone, and cardstock as the fins. The straw rockets will begin to take shape and students can begin launching in no time. Once ready to launch, slide the straw over the launch tube Lift the launch rod, release, and watch as your rocket soars through the air using pneumatic force. Adjust the launch angle and height of the launch rod to generate different output and data. Students can modify and experiment with their rockets by changing the length of the rocket body, weight, and shape of the nose cone, and vary the size, shape, and number of fins to determine the optimal rocket for flight, speed, and distance. Straw rockets are an inexpensive and fun way to engage students into various STEM concepts such as force and motion, problem solving, technological design, and data collection, analysis, and prediction. Count down to learning at Pitsco with straw rockets and launch young minds into aeronautics and rocketry. We hope that you enjoy your straw rockets and straw rocket launcher and that this video will help your students not only make a straw rocket but also provide ideas on how to use your straw rocket launcher. If you are interested in more options for straw rockets or air powered products, please consider the following. To purchase any of these products and to see a full listing of all our straw rocket and air powered products, please visit our website at shop.pitsco.com.